Hello and good evening to Swinging from the Hips episode 8 and welcome to everybody out there in the interweb land and tonight we are um, got our special guest back on from a few shows ago, this is Taz Sati and we'll also be joining Rohit and Taran, our regulars. So we'll get cracking into the show and this week in history with Rohit. Good evening there. Yes, so this week, uh, 6th of June, 1994, Brian Charles Lara scored 501. Um, and we've also had our own very, very own Shane Bond, who was born on June the 7th, 1975. So happy birthday to them. Now, uh, here's a good one for the records. June the 8th, biggest ODI total of all time, 491 for four. And yes, that was our very own New Zealand woman against Ireland. And moving on, June the 9th, 1983. Now, this is an interesting one here. Zimbabwe, who didn't have test uh, status na- um, at that time, t- uh, bet the Australians at the Third World Cup. That was nine years before they actually got the uh, test match status. And, and then we had uh, June the 10th. <coughs> India with their first test win at Lords after 11 attempts. So well done to them back in 1986 there. Now here's one that um, popped up earlier for me today and I thought oh, this would be worth pointing out. It was about uh, we're just over 30 odd years ago they were labelled the worst team to arrive on English soil. but um, And that was back in 89 in the Ashes where Alan Borders, heroes actually, Winning four nil in that series, uh, coming back from you know being zeros to heroes. So there we have it. Um, well done to that team. It was a pretty uh, famous team in the end because they, that's where the War Brothers came out of them. You had Mark Taylor scoring eight hundred and thirty odd runs in that series, and a number of other uh, uh, youngsters that um, have come out to be superstars of the game over the years. That's and yeah. Um, yeah. I was just going to say that's that's sort of like you know so Alan Border wasn't it really when you look at that um, it was it, it, we've, we've talked about this before and it was he took over from the Kim Hughes having a crying meltdown on TV days and yes. then basically rebuilt that Aussie team from scratch went over there bunch bunch of nobodies and absolutely blew them away absolutely and I don't think the English were prepared for that at that time thinking oh these gonna guys going to be a bunch of easy beats because they were a bunch of nobodies back then. Yeah. <clears throat> um, hey, look, you know, it just shows you don't need a team of superstars at the end of the day. Well, you don't need a team of superstars, but the other thing it just shows is that it's, you know, one other thing in Aussie cricket in particular is the battler uh, mentality yeah. that they have. Um, you know, they're never down, are they? You, you've no. never, you, you, you're ne- you don't count your chickens when you're playing Australia in any format of the game because you, you know that it, that comes to bite you back in the bum. Absolutely. And, you know, Alan Border was that tough, uncompromising type of character, wasn't he? He was never going to give in to anybody. <laughs> well, I, I remember, I think I, I think it was actually in a home test, this one, when Craig McDermott was having a spaz on the field and basically Alan Border walked over to him. You know, Alan Border's not the tallest guy, is he? And he's no. looking up at him and telling him um, where in the world he fits in. And um, if he doesn't like it, he can go back home. And that was on an test. Ashes tour, that one over in the UK, because he told him... To- Get over here, yeah. come right here to him. And yeah, so, exactly. You know, up and you act up, you're off on the next plane home. Uh, you, know, that, you wouldn't want to get on uh, the wrong side of Alan Border, that's for sure. That's for sure. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, thanks thanks for that week in history there with Rohit, and we'll move straight on to the actual current news this week with Taryn. All right, howdy, gents. Well, look, a lot's happened since we've last spoken, but not a lot of action on the cricket field. ICC has now bought more time and po- by postponing the decision on the World T20, the status of the World T20 that scheduled to take place in October in Australia. The reason behind this is the encouraging progress Australia and New Zealand have made over the last few weeks. So that is good news for many smaller nations or nations dependent on the revenue ICC generates, but no decision yet. Now, staying in Australia, the Big Bash for this year will remain at 56 games um, around Robin, as well as five playoff games. However, a raft of in-game changes have been proposed. Bonus points available to teams for the progress at the 10-over point 
of an innings. Uh, substitutes are also allowed within that period. Our play could potentially be split between four overs at the top of the innings and two floating overs. Free hits potentially for bowling wides and additional um, breaks for advertisements and player strategy strategy after five overs. These uh, recommendations will go to the committee that will meet in July. So we can discuss a bit more in detail. There's nothing there, not reinventing the wheel. All of these things have been played out at tried and tested at a one day format. And it's just another way of skinning it. Um, on back, going back to the ICC, ICC could be loosening up its interpretation of the playing code and take a common sense approach to players who may take a knee or wear and display slogans in the mark as a mark of solidarity to the Black Lives Matter movement, a move that will bring ICC in life with FIFA. Now, the West Indies Cricket Tour of England as a global event has escalated further in the wake of the killing of George Floyd in the USA. Jason Holder and his men arrived at Old Trafford where the squad will train in isolation for the next three weeks before decamping to Southampton for the first test on the 8th of July. This comes as a at an interesting time as former West Indian cricket captain Darren Sammy has called out some of his former teammates at one of his IPL franchises, Sunrisers Hyderabad, who are calling him, quote, Kalu, which is a Hindi term for black. In his interview, he mentioned it was a common occurrence and this word was used to um, refer to him and to Sarah Pereira, the Sri Lankan all-rounder. In addition to this, Michael Carberry, the former England test opener, has also um, come out and voiced his concerns around cricket and how rife racism is in cricket. The issue, I quote, the issue you have in cricket is the people running the game don't care about the black people in it. Black people are not important to the structure of English cricket. That is quite powerful for somebody who is a through and through English cricketer all the way through the county system. Um, and it makes for quite a interesting debate when we have our guest on the show. Back to you, Robert. Yeah, so that was some interesting things happening in the news, exactly. And then just, just basically in terms of the T20 World <laughs> Cup, that sort of um, some announcements. And Simon in the chat room hoping for the uh, T20 World Cup to go ahead. I, I'm, I, I t have to be honest, I'm getting a bit confused in terms of what's um, going on with the T20 World Cup because conversations that we've had in past has actually been around the fact that they want to run the IPL tournament so that... Uh, Therefore, if they're running the IPL tournament, it's going to clash at the timings that they want to have it with the T20 World Cup. So that'll get shuffled around. Now it's sort of come back onto the um, table that the uh, T20 World Cup will, is you know, being considered. So, yeah, I'm sort of getting a, it's, it's all a bit confusing. But, um, yeah, what, what, what are our thoughts? Do we think that where, where do we all it's going to be an individual thought in terms of what do we think? Is the T20 World Cup really going to take place this year? Well, look. We've got what uh, the new post on Facebook that there's 35,000 35, tickets sold for Eden Park right. for the Blues game. Man, yep. When was the last time that happened? If, if it's many years, many years ago, many years ago. Mm. I think when I started liking rugby. Um, <laughs> um, if that's happening, Australia is not far off. I heard on a news talk ZB that the uh, New South Wales Premier or somebody wants to see 40,000 seated in one of the NRL games in two weeks' time. Right. And that is July, June, July. So you fast forward to October, it, things could be very different by then in Australia and New Zealand. And I'd love for it to be pushed back ever so slightly. And if it means New Zealand gets a little pie, slice of the pie and gets, gets to host a handful of games as well, that'll be fantastic. Yep, yep. And in terms of like the IPL itself, then it, it won't really ha will happen. Won't happen. Will it benefit any other country outside of India? Probably not. I mean, no, not really. No. No. Yeah. So I mean, and I don't really follow. I will probably sit up and take notice of the World T Twenty to an extent, but I'm not going to stay up to watch IPL. But hey, no. I'm one person. There's probably 1.4 billion that was the other way around. So. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and and, um, and and obviously, we'll, we'll actually we'll bring our guest in um, for the evening here, Taz. So oh. we'll bring him into the old discussion. 
I forgot to mention there is yep. uh, um, in the news there was female cricket. There was the um, debate around bringing in smaller sized cricket balls to make it more of an attractive game for within the women's well, game. That's that's another good one actually. We'll talk, we'll bring that into our later discussion around leg spin when um, we get into our main topic for the evening in terms of. Uh, whether it's what's the benefits of having that smaller ball, particularly when it comes to spin as well. So um, let, let's just, obviously the serious issue of the week that um, Taryn's alluded to was obviously around globally is Black Lives Matter. And we, we've been talking about the sort of race uh, issues that have um, basically, they're in every part of our lives really, aren't they? And obviously they're coming out that they're prevalent in the cricket world as well with, West Indian players talking about, um, you know, playing in the IPL and being called Kalu. First of all, does any of us speak any Hindi at all? Because I don't. <laughs> no. no. That's a negative. That's, yeah. that's a negative. Taz does. Yeah, you, do yeah, you, Taz? Do you speak of Hindi? So what does, yeah. what does Kalu, what does Kalu mean? <laughs> I think it's someone with darker complexion. Yep. So it's um, it's not not necessarily black, but like generally, like you know, I mean, uh, if, you know, if, if you live in that part of the world, if you know that um, one of the most sold cosmetics or the the um, I think it's the one of the creams is skin whitening cream, you know. So I think right. there is that bit of thing uh, in subcontinent, and I think yep. Eastern Africa where they wanted they obviously a fairer skin is preferred. So someone with a slightly darker complexion is probably called Kalu, and then that's it's it's more to do with the complexion rather than anything else, in my opinion. So it's not a derogatory word as you would find the N word would be in such that type of case, wouldn't it? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, it's more to do with yeah. the complexion than anything uh, anything else I could think of. Yeah. Because yeah. I actually was wondering whether it was something to do with the Jungle Book, because you had Kalu in the uh, Jungle Book. So that's what I was wondering. I, was, I didn't have a clue. And and. and in, in terms of like um, what something we've known in terms of cricket in general, I mean, yeah. generally it's been controlled by the ICC. And when we look at the makeup of the ICC, when we make up, I mean, yeah, well, let's take the ICC. It's generally been controlled by, a, I suppose, a, col a colonial aspect, if we might say that. You know, um, controversial here. Anybody go for it when you want to. I'm just saying, oh, so the ICC has basically been, it's, it's, it's sort of run in the colonial aspect, hasn't it, in terms of the way that cricket has been run until very recent times when BCCI has been sticking their head up. Well, I, I actually know. I can't disagree with that because a lot of the... I think presidents or chairmen of ICC have actually been from the Asian subcontinent. Right. You know, you've had, um, yes, now I think you've got an Irishman or someone, um, Swan, Swanee something, but it was still ICC's president, I'm pretty sure, is the, um, the former chairman from BCCI. And prior to that, it was Shrini Wasson and whoever else. So, you know, the, the Asian subcontinent does have hold a sway. At the top echelons. Is that so, more in the recent times, though, Taryn? Probably in the last twenty years. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah I think, like, to... if, you, if, you, if you look at the history of cricket, it was MCC who was controlling the game until quite, like, you know, I think post World War Two, maybe it has become more ICC have taken the front sort of, you know, uh, role. And uh, traditionally, I think, um, it, but because it was an English game, uh, just uh, obviously the all the colonies, like, you know. Um, British India and like, you know, wherever they went, they took cricket. And I think it's just, um, I think for those people, it might be just a pride as well that they, they, they can be as good as English in their at their own game. And that's yeah. what I think how people see it. So trying to beat the English at their own game. And then obviously, just as you say, over the last 20 years in particular, you've had that sort of transformation where the, the, the countries where the game's been taken to have started to become more involved in the running of the game as well. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, how it wasn't long. It hasn't been long since they moved out of Lords. They used to be, ICC headquarters used to be based in London, and then they moved out to Dubai. And there was quite a big thing for the ECB to let go of it as well, you know, to actually, and that probably was the tipping point of the power, where they yep. started pulling away 
out of ECB and you could call that that was probably Asian influence and Australians wanting to pull away from the umbrella of England or British colonialism and then start having more of a say. Yep. What's the influence of, the, like, obviously in the early days when we're talking, and I'm saying early days, I'm talking a long time ago when yeah. dinosaurs were in the world. You had the MCC, obviously, as the name as well. Um, what's, what's their involvement like now in terms of running the game? Is there still that sort of influence there? <clears throat> I so I mean they you know MCC sort of uh, rule book still uh, floats around so I don't know uh, Tarun would probably know better but um, they like I don't know if you know in English team used to be called MCC at one stage mm. ah I was not aware of that yeah so it used no. to be called MCC and uh, you know it's just uh, over the years obviously MCC has gone uh, not as strong like you know they've obviously taken the some some of the pri privileges away and i think they still if i'm not wrong they still propose a lot of rules and rule changes in cricket yep mm. right yep they do they do this or they're still involved with rules of cricket and but um it seems like the, with the recent stuff that's been happening and i've noticed um a lot of committees are now being set up by the icc which are uh, much more global and uh you know pe um, players from all countries represented on the committees um, for setting rules, especially around the COVID recently, you know, let's take the ball, saliva on the ball thing. They've actually had like, you know, committees coming from globe, the global committees that are forming to sort of come up with a solution to saliva on the ball type thing. So, <laughs> excuse me. Yeah. So I, <laughs> I suppose it's sort of going, that's a tricky subject that we're sort of going down and, and we're treating on eggshells as well as we do it. We are. <laughs> so I'd be very, very uh, car uh, careful, I suppose. But, uh, well, Taz, have you, what, what do you, how do you see this thing that, um, so what Darren Sammy's come out and said, Yeah. do you think what he, when those, his teammates did say those words, right? Yeah. No, that will use that word. Was, would that have been used in a derogatory sense? Um, I, I don't. I personally don't think so because, like, um, you're talking about a, a very good cricketer and a leader. So I don't think people would would go to that extent to someone like him. I personally think it's more just uh, just a slang for uh, someone with a darker skin. I, I don't. I I can't see it any other way. Yeah, and I'll just I'll, 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 the other thing I'll throw in there is that I mean, within the Indian culture, we always have little sort of nicknames. And, and sort of um, not not nicknames in terms of uh, um, you know like Taz, but sort of like little nicknames that you have for your like your your kids or your close mates or whatever that you sort of like almost like a pet name sort of thing that you have. And, and to me, it was uh, without knowing the full situation, just the culture and the side of things. Is that that's the way that it felt like? Is that it's just a sort of like a a pet name sort of nickname sort of thing that they were uh, that they had for one of their close mates. Yeah, no, I, I guess wouldn't like, say obviously, I Sammy, wouldn't wasn't, say aware, that. Sammy I wouldn't wasn't aware of it, that uh, what it means, which is a shame. Um, I can give you an example. Uh, one of the better, like, tape ball cricketers in Pakistan is, like, famous in Pakistan. He's called Shebaz Kalia. Kalia means the similar to Kalu, right? Yep. Uh, he's of slightly darker complexion, but he knows what it means, and he's yep. okay with it, you know? His yeah, Facebook right. page is Shebaz Kalia, so, you know? <laughs> but that's his name, right? No, that's not his name. It's because of his darker complexion. Yeah, but he's 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 fine with it. You know, he doesn't see it as a racial thing. He just see it as a like a how he is and what he's been called since he was younger. And he understands the thing. And um, I mean, like, but I mean, in this case, obviously, Sammy didn't know uh, what it meant. So I guess that's the best bit, uh, Dodgy. <laughs> yeah, that's um, yeah. Oh, I don't, I don't I don't think it was a my, I don't think it was a respectful thing. Uh, but I don't think it was a malicious thing either. Yeah. I just think it was just a reference. There's, oh, here comes the dark guy. Yeah. Or, you know, yeah, I, I, it doesn't make it right. Um, within the Indian subcultures and complexities, it probably doesn't make it wrong either. You know, so it's just how they are. Not, so, sorry, it's how it's um, articulated without meaning any ill. Words. It's unfortunate that 
um, so much um, now it's come to light the way it has and you with looking in hindsight he probably sees it in a, der a derogatory way yeah what what do you thought um, if you had a pale skinned complexion and someone in the team called him by the equivalent name of what they said Gallo in the yeah. pale skin word of the lingo uh, that that person would have been taken offense to it um, they probably speak to speak of in white reverse, is what Gora. I'm saying, you know. Gora, they probably so refer to the white players as, as Goras. Yeah, yeah Goro. exactly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they probably, you know, they might say, you know? but look, it's a fact. <laughs> I was, and I can say, I haven't played a lot of international cricket, and this was in a first class game against the touring side. I was in the dugouts, and the opposition team was predominantly of color by one person of your or white skin um, and the people of color jovially when that person was on the field some of the non-players were sitting in the dugouts and while the people of the players of color were calling the other guy saying pink skin pink yeah, skin right pink skin okay yeah and he turned around and laughed <laughs> yeah you know, so I think it comes down to how well you know your mates and who it they are so. and well, I, how they're yeah. talking to you. That's you know, probably the big thing. We'll, we'll wrap it up and we'll move along to our main topic of the show. But I, I, a good example of that is yeah. I'll, go, I'll go back to my school days, my primary school days. And um, I was getting hassled by a bunch of kids at school and they're calling me curry muncher. And um, eventually, it's sort of like, and they a bit, a bit more went with it. And so I told the teachers and they got it right bollocking. And then we we're playing soccer that afternoon, and um, one of my mates called me curry muncher, which was, you know, as I said, it depends on the context that it's used in yeah. that it makes the difference, right? But boy, did he get a bollocking as well <laughs> by the teacher? <laughs> by the teacher? No, no, by the teacher. <laughs> yeah. But it, it's different, right? When your mates go, "Hey, darky," or something like that, you know, it, it, you can pull the hundreds of things. But that's that a fine line, though. That's a yeah, fine line. Fine. I think it's, Absolutely. It's a fine it's line. Okay Where do you know that line? If you're okay for one person to call you something, then you've got to be okay with everyone calling you that. Calling it. Well, I don't know. I mean, uh, like, I get called cheeky darky by my mates every now and then, right? Because but you're a cheeky darky. If somebody off the street come and call me cheeky darky, then I'm saying up for racism because I don't know me from above. So, <laughs> so, you know, it does make Pretty a difference. Cool. Yeah. Pretty cool. I would say. Anyway. But but before we go into the, it's too big a hole in there, let's let's move on to leg spin, <laughs> shall we? <laughs> let's spin our way into leg spin. That's a good segue. Now, that's a good segue. That's a good segue. <laughs> <laughs> right. So tonight's topic, leg spin, and we want to sort of pick up a few tips and tricks for the people out there in terms of how they can do uh, or learn to or improve their leg spin capabilities. And we've got two people on the show that have been some great proponents of the art. Before we get into it, Taz, tell us, I mean, obviously most of the people are going to know what it is, but let's just basically say, what is the art of leg spin? So, I mean, if we're talking leg spin here, we're talking about like uh, wrist spin, if that's that's uh, fair to say. Um, yep. So we're okay. talking about wrist spin, obviously um, you use your wrists to spin the ball and um, you tend to have less control than right. orthodox off spin, right? So wrist spinners have... Um, less of a control because they obviously let the ball go with their wrist rather than finger spinner releases the ball quite late. So, uh, but at the same time, like leg spinners or wrist spinners have more X factor as well, and they can get more out of the pitch or more out of um, the, yeah, they can have more variations in comparison to the finger spinner. So yep. there's an X factor, and the trade off is uh, obviously you will you you will miss your length, you know. <laughs> So, in terms of you're saying it's wrist spin action, so you're using your wrist. If you're using your fingers to turn the ball the other way, you're not a leg spinner then. So now, if you're if you're bowling like finger spinner is like you know off spin is generally yep. known as finger off spin, spin, and wrist yep. spin is like obviously leg spinner is like wrist spinner or Chinaman bowling other way around. So it's yep. more like bowling with your wrist, flick of the wrist. Okay. And um, yeah, so generally you have less control in comparison to the finger spinner. And so you've because you've got the less control. What you, what's the main key thing that you actually is starting off in particular? What's the first thing that you're trying to do? Is you're trying to find your length, or 
I mean, it, it, it depends. Like you know, I mean, I encourage, I would encourage guys to turn the ball as much as they can, and then add other things to it. Yep. So when you're trying to turn it as much as you can, obviously you'll miss your length a lot more. But I think it's the volume you need uh, for leg spinner. You probably need a lot more practice than like an orthodox off spinner. Okay, so you're basically trying to, and interestingly enough, and this week in the news, Jitan Patel was saying, you know, um, who's, who's a great off spinner, and saying that at the end of the day, the best thing you can do is bowl, bowl, and bowl some more. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so if we're looking at um, doing leg spin, we, we talked about how we've come up with doing uh, the class or talking about leg spin today, is that we're talking about, what, what was the um, Shane Warne's coach's name, sorry, Taryn? Terry Jenner. Terry Jenner. He was talking about how we were talking about Mike getting the ball that Mike getting got the ball of the century and uh, how Terry Jenner actually said, well, that was actually a really bad ball um, because the leg spinner should be basically pitching it uh, to look to get an edge out to first slip. What, what, so where are we landing it? Where are we looking to land the ball? When, once you've got the control and you've bowled a lot and you're looking to get control, where are you looking to land the ball? Like personally, like, you know, again, it, it varies bowler to bowler. So um, if you are like, if you're landing on off stump and it's turning, so depending upon the pitch as well. So if it's a slow turning dig, you've got to be at the stumps so that you make the batsman play. Because even if you pitch on off stump or forced stump, they can leave you if they're picking you. Yep. So I would say to keep the batsman guessing, I would say if it's a turning track, middle and off. If it's not a turning track, maybe heading off. Right. I'm so you basically probably <laughs> yeah. What yeah, you spinning going, away to the right hander? Yes. yes, and yes heading yeah. on off, spinning away to the right hander. Yeah. So you are so still well, trying yeah. to catch the edge of the bat. Yeah. Ideally, yeah. Yeah. So you're talking about leg spin landing? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. What line? I would. So Taz, what was your line? What did, where did you say it should land? So what I was saying is, if it's a turning track, you make the batsman play by landing middle and off and turning it away. If it's a uh, if it's a track you're not too sure about, you probably would be trying to still trying to land around off stump and yeah. make the batsman play. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I um, I have obviously I haven't played on a lot of uh, spinning pitches, so I've never <laughs> had to worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> so I um, I'm not skilled enough to bowl two different lines, so I could only luckily I could focus on a good ball or a bad ball. And I was trying to bowl on a good a good ball to me was always something. I always thought try and head off by if it doesn't turn. So I'm gonna assume it's not gonna turn and I want it to head off. Right. And if it turns, okay. I'm getting the outside edge. And if it doesn't turn, I'm hitting the LB. Right, yeah. Sliding it past the bat inside bat edge. Yeah, so <laughs> that to me was easiest because spin is not guaranteed. Right, mm -hmm. the turn, the break off the wicket is not a guarantee. So, how do you then control what you can? So, so you mean like let's let's t take that. I mean, we were talking about a, a turning pitch or a non-turning pitch. One of the greatest leg spin bowlers that we were, everybody seems to go to, is obviously Shane Warne. And it's whether it's myth or whether it's real, the view was of a of a cricket fan that's an armchair critic is that he can turn it on glass. What is he doing that uh, sort of gives the impression that he's turning <clears throat> is someone that has so, the ability to turn it on glass? So, so I guess, like you know, I mean, uh, I was I'd, I had like brief uh, contact with the uh, great um, Abdul Qadir. He's his past mm -hmm, now, mm -hmm. um, and um, again, his theory was the same that obviously you should be able to turn on any surface. The thing is, like turning on any surface means that you have to bowl the optimum pace to get the turn on that. Um, so, for example, if it's a really flat dig and there's no turn, you have to go slower and have more revs on the ball. Yep. So it's it's like um, it's basically um, what you can say is a relationship between the amount of revs and yep. optimum pace to turn the ball on a certain surface. Yep. So with Shane Warne, he got incredible revs on the ball. And right. uh, that kind of gave him the X factor in that way, that even the tracks which weren't turning that much, but if you look at his wickets, he got a lot of wickets on his on his slider, which yes. is uh, not not orthodox leg spin. It's more like obviously sliding and hurrying the batsman up. Um, okay. But um, I guess like uh, revs on the ball was his key, and he had a lot of revs on the ball at a good pace. 
How do you get revs on the ball or what sort of um, <laughs> practice technique can you do? So you're sitting at home, maybe, I don't know whether it's in the nets or you're just sitting on the sofa at home. Is there something you can do to practice getting more revs on the ball? Yes, by that app that Jim Raval is putting out and then Taz will tell you. <laughs> <laughs> What's a butt jeans app? I don't know. I, I, this is the first I've heard of it. It's not a yes. setup. It's set up oh, for me. Tell us about the coach. Do you more Jake, tell you to say that, did he? <laughs> <laughs> no, he was telling me about some. Um, there's, I think, there's a Chris Lynn app and those kind of apps. So we were talking about it. So I just um, <laughs> put out there. No, no. Uh, look, I, I'll add to what Taz said. And Cherubin Pasapati said this to me oh, almost about nine years ago. But no, yep. I kind of had to catch up with him. Um, Shruban, who's our former guest, um, he said he got this from Glenn Turner. Because then we were talking about the right pace for a right wicket. You know what's the right pace to bowl? Because you're always, if anybody's coming through like the age group setup or whatever, you know, and people think their child or their son or daughter is the best thing since sliced bread when you're bowling slow donkey drops and turning it three meters either way. And you know, you look back and go, ah, oh, well, that's not going to go anywhere because it's not quick enough. It's not quick enough. And next thing you know, that kid hears it and that person then starts bowling really as fast as they possibly can to try and get their pace up. So in that, within that conversation, Shrubin said he spoke to Glenn Turner about it. Glenn Turner said the bright, the best pace for every wicket is different and that is dictated by the fastest pace with which you can turn the ball on that given wicket. Right. The fastest. So if it's a turner yep. and you can, if you can rip it, if you can get turn on that wicket with the fastest pace, that's the right pace. And that's different for every single one of us here attempting to bowl and in either way. Taz can probably turn it at a different pace to me on different surface and vice versa. Would you agree with that, Taz? Yeah, I think again coming back to the same thing, like you know, even on a on a turning track, you need to t if you want to turn square, you still need an optimum um, optimum sort of ribs on the ball. Like you have to be a certain amount of action on the ball to get um, more out of it. Um, I'll give you an example: if it's a if it's a really sort of um, like flat dick or new dick which has got like no turn in it. You have to bowl slower, but you still need to give enough revs on the ball. So the, the optimum tune. pace with, uh, I mean, that's where Shane Mon was, as, as we were talking about, Shane Mon was great because he just had so much action on the ball. Even on the tracks which were not turning, he would still get something out of it. Yeah, so I suppose what you're saying is he was able, like some of us, not everyone can put revolutions on the ball at pace, right? He was able to put revolutions at pace. And at different paces, yes, he was able yeah. to generate the same yeah. amount of revs from 78 through to 88 yeah. kilometers an hour. You know, not many, most of us are limited to, I, I bowled better when I was quicker. I couldn't do the same as slower. And, but, you know, some people are the opposite. Some bowl really well when they're bowling slower through the air, but struggle to do the same thing. So they were limited to a couple of kilometers, but I think Shane Warren had the capacity to do the same over 15 kilometers. So yeah, from exactly. what I'm hearing from what you both have just said now is that the first thing you want to do is to get your revs up. So, you know, get the get the revs in, get the revs in, get the revs in. Once you've got the revolutions on the ball, you want to then practice bowling at varying speeds with the same revs so that your pace is varying, but your revs are now maintained a cons consistency to them once it's landing, it's ripping. Would yeah, that be a fair assumption? Yeah, I, I guess like you know when you're trying to it's an angle of release as well so mm -hmm. for example mm -hmm. uh, i don't know i've got a tape i don't know if it's a good example <laughs> yep yeah um, <laughs> it, it, it depends so if you're turning it uh, away right so it depends the smaller the angle less ribs you need to to turn that much right yep if it's yep. a smaller angle and if you give it like say this angle needs 100 ribs right and right. you've given with a small angle you've given 200 ribs so okay. the chances are you probably will get drift but it yep. will still turn the small amount. Whereas when you're giving a bigger angle, it needs a lot more ribs. So someone like, uh, say, Shane Warren would use a bigger angle and still have enough ribs on the ball to turn it at a bigger angle. Angle. Right. And that's where sort of, um, 
I guess um, yeah, if you if you can control the revs and if you can control the angle, um, you probably get more out of it as a leg spinner. Okay, so I'm going to come back to the first question I asked you guys. The, you digress from nicely. How do you? What's the what, <laughs> what's the exercise you're doing to get to practice getting more revolutions and more re revolutions on the ball? Is there something you can do that you know you can give the young Johnny or Jitesh at um, that's growing, learning this art and leg spin on, hey, here's how you can learn how to make more um, more evolutions. Shall I go first, Aaron? You go. Go for it. I okay. don't have an answer to it because I never did it. That's why I ignored your question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, I mean, I guess, like, uh, obviously, ribs got a lot to do with your fingers and how flexible you are. Um, mm -hmm. and, and your wrist, obviously, how flexible it is. Um, one thing uh, we, we, I mean, someone can, you can do at home or like, you know, like the lawn balls, like how you throw them. Yes, so something yes. Something like that, that helps sort of improve your fingers doing the, the like the wrist on the ball. Yeah. Um, and one thing I do with, I think I might have done with Taron as well, but um, I do with young ballers is like, um, they use like the balls with no seam. So like a hockey ball or a, any other ball which has no seam. So yes. it's harder, harder to, to turn sort it. of grip, grip the ball. Yep, uh, what yep. that does is like sort of uh, encourages them to have more action on the ball. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that, so <laughs> I, I think that that'll be the best one is that actually get that smooth ball, that hockey ball, um, to, and practice with that. And and yeah. if you're successful if you with the hockey if ball, if you can turn that ball, which yep. means that your wrist and you've got enough revs on the ball, it will be easier with a cricket ball. Sure, but, Karen. I think I one of the my very first coaches. This was back in India. It was a this older gentleman. Um, he said to me, he said, if it's round and it fits in your position, whatever the purpose you had for that thing, spin it ten times before you do what it's your intended purpose was. If it's a stone, try and spin the stone a few times before you chuck it at a dog. If it's a, <laughs> you know, no, literally, like he said, if it's a stone, try and spin it. He said, try yep. and spin it because you'll work out how to hold it to spin it. And then if it's an apple, spin it a dozen times before you eat it. If it's an orange, do spin it a dozen times before you peel. Whatever. Different yep. shapes, different sizes, because there are, there's no reason why those things won't spin. It's about understanding what your fingers need to do to make it spin. Yeah. And then you develop yeah. a muscle memory for it. Yeah. So you do that through repetition and you work. And I think I'm a... Big believe, and I'm sure Taz will agree that you work out your own way of doing things, and yeah. that I think at the highest level that separates the boys from men because there's that X factor is so unique it's hard to pick. Right. Okay. No, that's that's it. Mm. And so then basically moving along, we'll come we'll come back to some of these questions that are popping up because we'll cover them off um, to the people that are listening out there. We'll cover some of these questions off as we go along. You, you mentioned um, just when you had your tape there, which is rather interesting because I remember sitting in the dairy and using a, a tape and trying <laughs> to get it like a seam. But anyway, that's another story. Um, you, you mentioned getting drift. Yeah. How, so what is drift? How do you achieve it? Because you're talking about Shane Warne. If he's got that wide axis on the seam, then is he still going to get the drift? Or So, yeah, explain some drift to us. Well, I mean, there are a couple of things. Obviously, how your weight goes into the ball as well. Um, it would be difficult to explain over over, over the like um, over the camera, but it's like how your head position goes and how your weight goes. But like, I, I use a simple theory because uh, um, you might have watched or seen um, a three D ball. And about yep. ten years ago, he was getting some really good drift. I don't know, Taron, if you remember it. Mm. Um, I rate him as a bowler, leg spin bowler, and. Um, because he used this small angle, so he was never trying to turn big. But he, when he was giving a lot more revs, he was getting that late drift. And someone like Kumble, when he gets it right, he got a lot of people out just because of the drift. So right. um, drift, in my opinion, is like, say, for example, if you're using a certain angle to turn the ball, say, say if you're trying to turn the ball at 30, right, angle of 30, yep. and it, it's optimum revs for that in th those conditions is 100, right? But if okay. you give it 200 drifts at the same angle, it should drift because wow. it holds okay. up the ball. Yep. Wow. <laughs> okay. No, no, that's cool. That's cool. And it's, no, 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 no. It makes sense. I mean, I mean like it, it, what you're saying is that, I mean, obviously, again, it's coming down to the control on the revolutions 
uh, in terms of what action you're getting on the ball. And to get that drift happening, you're getting more revs up again whilst changing the bias um, yeah. of the seam for Wanda. Yeah, it'd probably be the best way to put it, isn't it? Yeah. And then is dips again, the same sort of concepts there, same, same things, body position, seam position, and the revolutions on the ball? Or does yeah, it get different again? Is, um, a couple of things, like say someone like uh, Kumble had a good dip because of his high arm action and he would drop down. And because of that, he will get a good dip, which means that, um, you know, you almost feel like it's a half volley, but it's not. So uh, yep. it, it depends on your drop action on you. as well. It depends on your bowling action as well. But uh, when we're talking about, say, uh, a slower ball, if you're bowling like a, at a slower pace and not like because Kumble was around 90k around. He was a fast bowler, and, yeah. Yeah. And um, like traditional leg spinners are around 88, 8, maybe 75 to 85. So if you're operating at a slower pace, again, like, you know, the more revs you've got, the more the ball's going to hold up because mm -hmm. of the friction. And, yep. and then it comes down, like, you know, when it gets to an optimum. Uh, sort of length where it drops, it drops quicker. Right. So that's that's one of the reasons. Some people um, try to keep the shine inside. So when the shine drops, it slides through quicker because of less friction. The rough side okay. would have more friction. So there yep. are a few things people use to add the drift, uh, add the sorry dip to the ball. But mainly, I think it's your release and then your drop of your action and your body positioning. Aaron. Okay. Um. Uh -huh. I, there's the, um, I even if you go like a from a young kid point of view, and if you want to keep it really really simple, and you I've got a cricket ball here, like if that if you know the camera's there, if you keep the seam dead straight, so if you're trying to ball a top spin, that circle will complete itself the fastest if you keep it at a top spin, right? If I turn it, the angle is quite great, so that means that the drop <coughs> is varied. So if you keep so the straighter your seam, the greater your dip. Compared okay. to all the leg spinners. You take away all the things that Taz has talked about. That is the top 10% of getting cute and refining your art. But if you really yep. want to go, so the thing that Taz talked about, you got your big spin on that angle. If I So you're looking at it as a baddest perspective. Yes. Right. You got a big spinner there. You got a small spinner there. You got a top spinner there. And something that's going to dip on this you. This will have the most dip. Uh, most bounce, <clears throat> zero spin yep. because it's, it's straight, right? Bolt upright. Yep. This here, small spin, um, small drop, small drift. Assuming all things are equal, you know, that you're putting yep. the same amount of revs and everything. Okay. This here um, is going to have the biggest drift, most to turn, but the least amount of dip because it'll slide. It'll push the drift will pull you further forward the ball than making the drop because there's no drift involved. Yep, sure. So it pushes through. So am I on the right path there? Assuming all things are equal. Yeah. Okay. Because no, 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 no. the big the bigger the angle is obviously the more uh, your your angle the bigger your angle is the more side on you're going. So yep. naturally, which means that you're not getting the dip, but you you st can still get some dip, but uh, not as much as you would with a straighter or with a higher arm. Yeah, yep. So you're either getting you're getting more drift or you're getting more dri dip. It's dif so you're 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 giving up one for the other, in a sense. Unless you're a freedy, unless you're a freedy. <laughs> yeah. Then then the top two percent is coming, and that's what Taz is talking about. Is if yep. you've got your foundation so good, you can start playing around with it, then you add from 100. Everyone, we're working, what I just said is at 100% optimum, right? Yeah. But then you've got the freaks that can put 200 on what, no, the single, the smallest dip is. So what he's saying is, Freely will operate on this spin, but he's working at 200, creating that. But it looks like this, but he's creating what this does. For a normal sure. person, you have to use the sure. angle to get that drift. But he can do that here without giving up his dip as well. Yep. Boom, boom. <laughs> oh, nice. <good> <laughs> hey, and so good time to, to bring in um, Stephen Noblo's question from the chat room then. Uh, delivery from the crease and I suppose approach to the crease and, and, and how much of a difference that makes in your approach to the crease, the angle that you come in on and deliver the ball. 
It changes things, eh? I think it changes things. Um, it, it, like anything, it um, probably offers you pros and cons. If you can keep everything in down the channel and everything humming away in one direction, it makes it repeatable and it makes um, your armory much bigger. If you change your angle, it probably confines you in some ways, but gives you some advantages in other areas. So it, it really depends, like, you know, leg spinners commonly sort of fall away early. And um, to to sort of um, to counter that, sometimes we encourage people to go at an angle, even when they fall away, the first, first two steps would be straight and then they go away. But if they're walking in straight, they might fall away too early. But I guess like sure. it's quite subjective to the individuals that yep. how they feel comfortable. And sure. uh, like, like I'll, I'll give you an example. I work with, it's not a wrist spinner, an off spinner, a girl who used to be a fast bowler. And then um, she turned into an off spin. So we kind of made her go at an angle so that she slows down because she was like bowling off spin with a lot more momentum. Yep. So I guess like um, if, yeah, it, it depends upon individuals. Um, if you are struggling with the, you're falling too early, then angle is probably will help to sort of delay your um, sort of follow through. Okay. Yep. No, that's cool. Uh, and and one thing to be aware of, obviously, we don't want to run into the danger zone on the pitch. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A spinner should be okay. <laughs> we'll get those two warnings and we're off. <laughs> um, so we'll, we'll we'll just going on to the next sort of question I had here then. Uh, What's a deuce or what's a wrong one? Aaron, he's got a ball in his hand. Oh, okay. <laughs> and the spider, because you added that one in earlier too. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. So if you're looking at it, um, your this is your offspin action, right? There? Yep, yep. I imagine that is going to come through. That's an offspinner. A deuce is sure. just... Deuce in Hindi is the other one. Is that right, Tate? Deuce yeah, is yep. different or other, right? The Second, other one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah this was second um, or the yeah next or the other one, whichever, in whatever context. So it's from here. It's just seen a difference in changing wrist position. So if you go here, now if you bowl it this way, it's there. So that off spin, look at where the seam is looking. Yes. The seam is going to let's slip right or find leg. Right? Yep. You've just turned the action here. The wrist, all I've done is from here. I'm showing my palm to you. I've turned my palm to, palm to the off side. And I'm still assuming I do all other things without bending my elbow. And I get with my finger this way. Yep. Now the seam is going straight towards the batter yep. or towards off stump or first slip. And then okay. if you're putting revs on it, it'll then spin in that direction. Now you, yep. you, you bought a classic undercut. That's what, what you did with your wrist. I did. <laughs> yeah, that was a <laughs> is that bad or good? <laughs> that will still go that way, but that's not a extra. <laughs> That's an English <laughs> I think um, to 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 in other words, Dustra is like an orthodox off spinner. When he uh, sort of bowls an off spin, he generally goes up, yep. and then it turns or it doesn't turn. But Dustra, when it goes up, it turns the other way. Okay, which is like naturally, you know how you undercut it. So if a bowler is undercutting. As a batsman, you probably will pick it, and it's still going in opposite direction than it should be. But you can see that the way he's released the ball, whereas you want to Dusha, it goes over your hand, so it goes up in the air, ah, and okay. then turn away, and that makes it uh, so you, more deceptive. So you, and you get more dip out of the hands. So you have to. Yeah. Pardon? No, that's right. Carry on. Sorry, Taron. Taron, go. No, ahead. Oh, no, I think Ashwin's saying, do you get more dip? You do because it's more top on it, right? Uh, yeah, it depends. But like with the the guys, I think the. I mean, I shouldn't be biased, but like uh, I think Seklan Mushtaq was probably one of the better ones. Yeah, oh, easily, with, the you know. easily the best. Remember, so, he got Tendulkar in with, Singapore when on yeah. <laughs> charging. Remember the thing that? was like he he his Dusra was his Dusra's tra trajectory was same as his offspin's tra trajectory, and that's what made him better. Okay, so just so he the, pushed it in the air in the same way as an off spinner because off like spinner. you know how Taran was talking about the top spinner when you go up, yep. right? But his trajectory for off spin and booster were the same, or very close to, and that's how a lot of better batsmen he got, like you know, say some like Tendulkar, the guys better players of spin bowling, because the trajectory is the same. That's what I think deceived them um, with his deuce stress. Yeah, because okay. um, so if you flip that around to leg spin, yeah, um, 
are wrong. Eh? There's a lot of guys that bought beautiful leg spin and that's all they have, which is more than enough, to be honest. But then they're all wrong. Eh? It's just out and it's loopy and you see it because, again, it's the opposite of what has the same. It's loopy and you see it. The best leg spinners, they're wrong and it's just as quick as the leg spinner. Then there's yeah, no yeah. time. You have to pick sure. it out of the rip. He was taller. Um, I remember once uh, Rob Nichols said after playing him many years ago in a top end series, he said his wrong and was quicker than his leg spinner. His top end wrong and. If you don't pick it, you're out because it's yep. just no to react. Here, you, you go, oh, if I don't pick it, that's fine. I'll play it off the deck and I'll go back. No, nah, there's none of that. If you don't pick it, you're pretty much out because it's hitting your stumps and pads. At least his leg spinner was beating the bat. Yep. Yeah. The <laughs> best one, like, he's missing sturdy. everything. He's sturdy. Fantastic pace. Um, his um, wrong and, and uh, top spin. And from a great height. Yeah. Oh, man, you should see his arms. His long, long Punjabi built. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be allowed to say that. You <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, Actually, so we've got a good, a good time for the, because we're going through the different types of balls. The carom ball, what's, what's the difference between the uh, carom ball and, yeah, well, what is a carom ball? So, carom is obviously a board game you play. Yes. Uh, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's what you do with the carom. <laughs> so it's pretty much you do this exactly the same. I've got a tape, not a ball, but you do basically do exactly the same with it. So you push it to your. Oh, finger. okay. It's, oh, it's carom mainly like used. That. Yes, used in like uh, tennis ball and softball cricket a lot, um, because obviously the balls are softer than a cricket ball. But somehow some people manage to do it with the cricket ball, and I don't know how they do it. But like I would hurt my fingers. <laughs> I, I care him because I, I hurt my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so it's so basically you know how carom board the board is like this, right? The, your uh, yep. carom yep. is yep. like this, and you put it on the table and you flick from there. Yep. You do that. <clears throat> Obviously, you can't flick a ball like that because the bowling action is that way. So you then turn from here to here, and you're this part. So if you look there, yep, it's there, and you're just flicking it forward. Then What's the you bring your arm around? You're flicking no, it. You're just going. Yeah. You're and flicking it, it goes away. Someone like an Orion is so good. I think he can then hit. Different parts of the seam, he can hold Jeez. it in different places, That's and he good. will then change the angle and get it to deviate further. So he'll go <clears throat> pull a little bit on one side and flick. So then the seam goes there or wow. slightly there, which is why I think he can control what it does a lot more because he get, takes it away to the left handers as well. Okay, we're going to come back to one of the older variations that um, our friend Mr. Warren actually made famous is the flipper. What is the flipper and how do you bowl that? You go, Taz. Bring that tape out. <laughs> Bring that tape out. <laughs> yeah, By the way, you it's, uh, <laughs> like, you know, obviously, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's generally front of the hand. So instead of yep. like, um, I don't know, where's the camera here? Yeah. So leg spinner is going there. <laughs> a flipper is going there. Yep. Okay, so, so it's basically like, you just... Yeah. Yeah, it's almost hey, like isn't that a slider? Was, that's more of a slider. slider. Yeah, that's that's what yeah. he chain one ball more of a slider than than, so, than flipper. Um so I I read the book many, many years ago when I was academic and I was smart. So <laughs> a lot of red wine being drunk since so all of that's out the window. Um I think so if you take your top two fingers and your bottom, your thumb, right, and you place the ball there and you put it side on. Right, then you try and click your fingers with it. You do that. Click your fingers and place your ball in the middle. So you're doing that. Oh, right. so get over your thumb. So you're yeah, basically click. Click, under, clicking under. it over your thumb. Under, oh, under. under. Okay. So yep. still going yeah, out. Right. You're clicking under. So you're going. Wow. That, right? So it's that click to get the ball. Then the ball will start spinning backward. It's just backspin. Backspin, yeah. Right, it's backspin by but in this manner, or you can do it this manner, like a top. So the same one was more like pushing. And it. So he started Under? here. He started here. Then he had the shoulder surgery. Yeah. He and then he started struggling bowling that. 
and he started going down the leg and he lost his wrong one. But he then went to pushing it, yeah. Yeah. And that Sliding became it. the slider. Yeah. So it's it was it went from that to that. And I think I'm pretty sure well, I think Terry Jenner went to prison, didn't he? He was in prison for a few years and it was something to do with playing uh, all he had was a tennis ball and there was some story around it i don't want to okay. tell the wrong story to all our hundreds and thousands of fans That's right so, well there's something yeah, to yeah. go for them to go and google yeah exactly for them to go and google our hundreds and thousands of fans yeah another way, of, another way of um, the same flipper i think um it was abdul Qadir. and imran khan always said that if we had the umpires we had today he would have taken a lot more wickets because back in Neutral the day umpire. you were not given no back in the day you were not giving lb on front foot or you're yeah, right. to yep. be on the front yep. so his way was um again like you know more sort of uh, his own way which is you know which is he was unique bowler it's more like um, slightly like in new zealand we call it natural variation but it's actually in subcontinent that's what you learn to do it you know <laughs> so he basically is trying to keep the shine in and it's almost like undercutting but with leg spin flare so it it, it looks like a leg spinner but when it lands on the shine, it skids through instead of turning it. Okay. So his way of bowling the <laughs> flipper was that, and his flipper was pretty good too. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's yeah. yeah, yeah I, what? I, tell you what, I think what Taz is saying is right. I'm Taz, tell me if I'm wrong. You're looking at it as a batter. <coughs> yeah. You'll see this coming your way, right? Yeah. And you go bang. Yeah. So the South Asians and most and predominantly pakistanis and uh, right they're fantastic of just going how changing the wrist position probably either here with the ball there or this way to get the ball to instead of hitting the seam here it'll just hit the leather yep, it looks like, on. again assuming all things are equal so you all you're seeing is the better with one ball you'll see this Wow, it's revving, revving, revving its speed in your bat. You're trying to cover it. Or it's this way, like an off spinner. It's revving, revving, revving. It's going in this way. You're trying to, trying to cover for the spin. Suddenly, instead of holding it here, he's hold it, held it here, and he's still spinning just as hard. Same trajectory, but it doesn't hit this. It hits the leather underneath. It doesn't spin. It takes the outside half of the bat. You played inside the line. Or this one, you played for turn. But it's gone straight through, and then then the then the commentator comes into play. He's gone. Oh my God! It's unplayable. It's treacherous. We're being hard done by. It's turning on day one, session one. That's the game. <laughs> and so very blown. This guy just instead of understanding the small minute difference, and I I didn't know this. I learned it from the master sitting on our screen there. <laughs> he in my career, so after you stop, hundred. He basically cost me about a hundred wickets. Basically, had he taught me this ten years ago, God knows <laughs> where I would have been. <laughs> <laughs> it's all your fault. <laughs> With I mean, Shane Warne seemed to have a new a new ball every single time he sort of came to an Ashes series. How much of that was just psychology and playing with batsmen's minds rather all than? All of it, pretty much. <laughs> all of it. This, right? Missing ball, what the Englishman said. A ball can travel in three directions. Straight, left, and right. Unless you're getting it to go backwards, <laughs> there is no other way. A ball can only travel in three directions. <laughs> An Englishman made it only used to the ball going in one direction. So that was enough. <laughs> one, one of them, uh, one of the things you, you kind of talk, you, you, you mentioned very briefly, or in, in touching one of you guys, um, about disguising what is coming, because uh, that a, a lot of this seems to be when you get to that top level. Um, if the batsman, if the batsman knows what's happening, he can cope with it, but it's trying to fool him as to which way it's going to go. Is is is, is that true? Yeah, that all yeah. the is key. So disguising it. Yeah, disguising the, the what kind of things are you doing to disguise disguise what ball you're bowling and what, and what and what is the batsman looking for so i guess like you know if you're just generally talking about a leak spinner right yeah. so if you bowl a googly i mean nine out of ten tail enders won't pick it 
you know, so leak spinners are generally quite, you know, sort of, because, I mean, obviously Google goes the other way, completely other way. So you're, you know, you're, yep. you're talking about like, you know, almost like 60 degree change of angle instead of going there, it goes the other way. So the batsmen who pick it, um, they pick it from your hand, off your hand, your trajectory. So uh, the high performance, the better the bowlers are, what they try to do is like, they try to keep the trajectory and the pace the same, right? So they try to give them as less hints as possible mm -hmm. so that the batsmen can't, and the better ones are better at hiding it, you know? <laughs> and that's, mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's how I would define it. Taron? Yeah, uh, yeah, and that, and that's again in trying to do that. Maybe you know, so someone like myself um, probably end up ended up bowling more bad balls because I was trying to disguise it more and more to not give away cues, which means, like Taz touched on it before, you fall away a little early, or you're trying to go a little bit quicker or a little bit slower than what is your optimum pace, and then you drop the ball a little earlier. You know, it's a game of attrition and you're trying to look for the little um, one percenter and you yep. end up giving them something to work with and then they score off you and the pressure's back on you and you end up chasing the game again and again and again. And the good ones keep that balance really tight, their best pace is at X and they keep moving up and down ever so slightly. So it's very subtle variations. Everyone has variations, but they're too great. The ones that have the most subtle ones are the most successful ones and harder to pick, I think. Because even the camera can't spot the difference. The big variations, your video analyst will spot it. Mm. Yep. One of the things I talk about uh, um, for, uh, for, for a tall bowler is basically is, is because the visor is trying, to, is trying to bowl above the visor, so you can get the ball to go above that, so it's hard for the batsman to see. So why don't batsmen just not have visors to, 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 to combat that? I mean, Ashley Giles is a famous one for apparently having a very high action to try and get above the eye line of the. Line. I thought we were talking about spinners. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> 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 that, yes. I, 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 ask, yep. We're talking about leg spinners, and I know Ashwin's probably wanting to finish this up, but um, home domestic cricket? Yeah. Um, what I still is sorry. Let's have a quick chat over who's better. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I have haven't seen a lot of Todd Estill. I've played against him actually in Canterbury. Um, I would take East Sodi because East Sodi is yet to hit the up, like you know the. I think the he's still get better with age, and he is he's still I think twenty eight, and his better days are still to come. So based mm. just based on that, I think for his age, he's done really well. And mm. the domestic stats are actually, I mean, East Sodi's um, Plunkett-Teal record is like average of 30. And um, Todd Astle's um, Plunkett-Teal average is 32. So even based on stats, East has done better. But I think with age, he will get better. Because he's, yeah. yeah, he's still only, what, 25, 26, something like that? Uh, 28. He's 28. 28? 28, okay. Unless, can... unless White Ball gets the better of him. And he leans more towards it, and which affects his red ball. But I don't think it will because he plays at such a high profile white ball level that that aura and the confidence of that would allow him to pick up a lot more first class wickets. Do you think that the um, white ball, if you know, you're, you're talking about the effects of the white ball because he tries to bowl tighter and therefore it affects his more attacking style with the red ball? Uh, no, I don't think he bowls differently. He okay. Bowls but just the mindset shift and going going to a defensive my mind as soon as you get hit with red ball it has you know correct me if i'm wrong you know with, when you get hit you don't change or in fact you get even more aggressive and you toss it up or you kind of prize them out but in white ball when you get hit you go into your shell and you got to tighten up get out of that over is what you're yep. taught and once you get into that mindset as soon as one boundary comes you go, oh, oh, I need to tighten up. And then you start bowling darts and darts. Yep. And then you're going away from your bread and butter of having to take wickets. Yep. So you can and tie them you down. But yeah. You're not attacking. So yeah, I mean, you, put it that way. In, in white ball, good strike rate would be like uh, around 30. And red ball for a spinner, good strike rate would be around 55. You know, the best one. So oh, I guess that's like. Chain one. That's chain one. We've yeah, chain one. That's what I'm 55. saying. 
everyone else is 65 to 70. 70. 65. So you almost take twice as many balls to take a wicket in red ball okay. than you do yep. in white ball. So it's a different challenge. Mm. Now, is, do you want to do the next player comparison in terms of... Is, um, is, is yep, that, that because of the, the actual ball itself or just the... or because of the style of cricket? I mean, do the balls act the same for the leg spinner? Oh, because runs runs are more important. It's saving runs are more important in white ball cricket than yeah. it is. And the format of the game that dictates it, I think. And yeah. going on to our next player comparison in terms of uh, Shane Warne versus Anel Kumble, both league spinners. And I was actually surprised when I put the stats up for Anel Kumble. This is like, I didn't realise. He'd actually taken 619 wickets, which actually surprised me. Really? He's actually really good. I don't know why you're surprised. Because <laughs> because I'm a Kiwi in Kiwi land, mate. <laughs> well, you pick and choose, eh? Hey? You swing both ways, honestly. I told you to throw that one out there, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. So what do we got? No complaint yeah, versus Shane, uh, Shane Keith Warren. I guess like Kumble was uh, Kumble would have bowled half as many bad balls as Shane Warne did. If that's fair, <laughs> because mm, yep. his action and he was, I mean, he was um, on average he would have been eight to ten k's quicker than Shane Warne, which means that margin of error for him is bigger. With Shane Warne, the pace he was operating at, obviously margin of error was smaller. But again, he was um, he bowled more unplayable balls than Anil Kumbre, if That's fair to say, Taron. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I think well, Anil Kumble's nickname was Jumbo, <laughs> which talks about his, you know, I suppose, the, his physique and the pace with which he operated. Um, yeah, and Shane Warne, I recently had a comment. He said, um, looking back on some of the balls he bowled um, or the pace he bowled at when he watched some of these old reels, he couldn't believe how slow he was and how he'd survived in modern day. You know, because he thought he was bowling at that at that time, and even if he bowled now to face it, he'll probably feel faster. But the numbers were showing up at 78, 82 k's an hour. But his revolutions make it feel like you have no time. But the pace he was actually operating at was much slower. And he himself said, "Yeah, I'm spinners these days bowl at a way quicker rate," and he wouldn't know, um, you know, if, how he would have survived. And, and I think, like, uh, when he did play with another league spinner, um, I forgot his name. McGill. 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 Yeah. So, oh, that sorry, how can you McGill's, forget? He has, he has 200 test wickets. Yeah. McGill Stuart. had better, the games they played together, McGill had better stats than Shane Warne. And mm. Kumble, most of his life, at home at least, he's played with one or two spinners with him. Like, Harbhajan Singh, who's taken more than 400 wickets. So, I Raja, guess, like, Johan. Pardon? Uh, Venkatpati, Raju, Chauhan. So, so he always played with at least one other working. spinner in the team. Whereas yep. uh, Shane Warren, if it's day five, he will be bowling half the day. You know? Half the I mean, day, yeah, yeah. He's bowling half the overs yeah, in the day. You know? Yeah, yeah. So in Australia, I, I guess the, the conditions are different. Obviously, in, in India, they use uh, SG, a different ball to Kookaburra. Mm. I find, I think spinners probably struggle with Kookaburra. If I'm, uh, Taron probably tell me more. Uh, he's um, been bowling no, I like it. I only bowled with that, so I liked yeah. it. I hated the Dukes, but I once spoke to Jeetan Patel, and he said Dukes is a far superior ball. I'm not championing for any balls, but I like for Kukabaras, but he preferred the Dukes. Because Shane Wan struggled with SG, red ball. Mm. So it's Shane not Wan easy, actually... you know, because it's got a pronounced to seem. Yeah. And it's got like a, got a weird gloss with a rough leather. Yeah. It's almost a good... Um, uh, Marriage between a kookaburra and, and the duke, Dukes. yeah, with that, without the gloss on the duke seam. I'm, I'm more curious but, about seeing three of the balls and together now. But uh, see, Shane won. <laughs> Shane won struggled in India. Uh, I, I don't know if that's that's to do with the batsman, better better batsmanship or the ball. But he did struggle in India. I don't know what his stats are like in Test cricket in India, but they won't be as great as his outside India. You know, outside um, of India. It, it it would be even pretty interesting comparative to do, um, which because between Shane Warne in India, Shane Warne in Sri Lanka, Shane Warne in Pakistan, because the balls used would have been different because not all of them use SG for a start, right? So yeah, so that'll be a good comparative, and then because 
don't take it wrong. Shane Warne did still take four fists. I was watching some highlights when we were in lockdown, and he, I think it was that Mumbai game where Tendulkar and Lakshman started op- taking the opening up their hip and started hitting him with a cow. Yeah. When he was coming around the stumps, and that was second innings. In the first innings, he took a forfa and broke the Indian batting lineup, and then they countered him. Yeah. Worked out a plan. Yeah. Then they went, "Now you know what? We're actually going to hit him into into the spin." And that's something we need to get Taz on later because when you look at cricketers in New Zealand, they play with the spin. In Asia, they hit into the spin. You know, yeah, so I, you got off spin of bowling, they will cover drive you. So then you know, here we get told to come across and shovel it down the leg side. Yeah. They will spin that as a Cheer, careful, play with the them. spin. Play with the spin. Yeah. I don't. I don't have anyone's uh, stats by by where they play, but I've got those stats against who he was playing. So against Bangladesh, he averaged 27 uh, bowling. Um, against India, the average went to 47. Against Pakistan, it was 20. Against Sri Lanka, it was 25. Yeah, he, would have, he would have absolutely had them for dinner every single time they turned up in Australia, though. <laughs> so, you know, all three, of the, all three of the countries, he would have had them at nothing. And I'd love to see in those countries, it probably would be double. Well, well, we'll sort of, before we wrap it up, we've got one question. We'll have take the last question out of the chat room. And we're going to go with Pankaj. And uh, do you got, either of you know about this Takapuna left arm spinner? He's not a leg spinner, Jonesy. but he's a left arm he's spinner. About Jonesy. He's talking about Jonesy, I think. You know, yep. um, Phil Jones' nephew. Um, who's, who's nephew, yeah, sorry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The umpire, there's a uh, lovely umpire, wonderful umpire called Phil Jones, one of the most, um, probably the one of the top three um, human beings as umpires. You know, a lovely guy. It's his nephew. Is this um, left arm spinner? This is, I think Pankaj is just bringing this up because <laughs> Pankaj plays for QMU, which is a Prima Reserve major team, and that's our top side where Taz and I both um, work and play, or Taz used to be a former employee. Anyway, we play in Takapuna, which is one of the top two, top three premier cricket clubs in Auckland. And we're playing them in a T20. And they had this opening bowler run in and Pankaj hit him for six fours in the first over. Yep. And the way Pankaj plays, he plays a bit like we're in the Stavag. <laughs> Much heavier, chunkier, lazier version of him. <laughs> <laughs> but he plays like Stavag. He bowls like Robin Singh. Um, <laughs> So he he took him to the cleaners and Taz and I were standing on the sidelines going, oh, look, six more overs of this. We're actually going to put my own type of challenge um, to push Takapuna here. So we were first over Jones bowled. Actually, for Jones bowled, it was three runs and we struggled. Next over, we took 27 off him or the other way around. And as we happened to do, we um, then threw it away and we won't talk about the result. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no. You, so, Taz, how, how do you? What's your answer to that? Varying um, his pace. Varying his pace. Look, I mean, I've, I didn't, I only faced two balls, so it would be hard to comment. But oh, I, how, how, do, how do you vary your pace? How do you vary your pace? So there are two ways. Obviously, you push up your bowling up, or you load strong enough, and then have more weight going into the ball. And I would be more sort of um, the second one is probably the better one when you load strong enough and then then your weight goes into it because then you can have more action on the ball at a good pace. But if you're darting bowling darts just with the with with your with your fingers or with your arms, um, you're bowling quick, but it's um, there's not much action on it. So I guess like you know you can do both ways: go faster arm rotation or load stronger that more weight is going into the ball. Do you want to explain more about the faster arm rotation? How do you do that? So, so it's so it's almost like uh, if you're bowling medium pace, you know, like when you're bowling medium pace, obviously you go really low and then just go in one go, like just yeah. ball in one go. But the spinner just generally goes up. So I guess like um, um, if if you're bowling, trying to bowl darts, just practice maybe ball a bit of medium pace, you know, and then uh, go flatter. But obviously, if you're adding pace, uh, it would be flatter trajectory as well. Yeah. Yep. So, so basically, you, you, and you're you're manipulating. You're doing the same arm action with this pace, and then you're manipulating with your release, in terms of what you're achieving. 
So that's and, and varying your pace with the way that you release the ball. Yes, I mean, you obviously need to give it a bit of a push. So uh, as a batsman, he should be able to see. I mean, like if there is some some change in the pace of your arm rotation. Um, whereas if you're, cha- if you're putting more weight into it, which is obviously different thing, like we're talking about loading. Um, with loading, obviously, you have you delay your action and then all the weight goes into it, um, which adds a bit more pace, but there's more action on the ball. Whereas we're just bowling with the arm. It's like flatter trajectory and sure. uh, obviously quicker. So, I mean, basically, if you're as a batsman, if what you're looking at is the trajectory, if it's flatter trajectory, it, it is coming quicker. Yep. Yep. Definitely. <laughs> well, that's probably, uh, it, it, as I said, it's been a very technical night tonight. So, um, but before we have any too, have any more meltdowns out there, like Aaron out there with his wine, we'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up there. And I'll again, thank you, uh, Taz, for um, joining us on the show tonight. Um, really appreciate um, you joining us tonight again, and I uh, look forward to having you back on the show again soon. No, thanks for inviting me. Thanks, Dad. Thank you, Taz. It was awesome. And uh, thank you to Rohit and Taryn for um, uh, for our regulars on the show tonight. And um, to the to the viewers and listeners out there, make sure you go ahead and share uh, the um, podcast. You Obviously, it's a podcast that you want to go back and listen to to pick up some of that gold that we have spoken about tonight. And also, if you could go onto the New Zealand Sports um, Radio uh, Facebook page, you're going to find some fantastic shows there. There's on the Monday nights, um, there's the rugby show. There's Wednesday nights, we've got the league show. Obviously, we've got Swinging from the Hip on Thursdays. And we've also got the Do You Know Your Sport quiz. And if you want to be part of a two-man team, get your, get your mate together, get on the show, do you know sport, just drop us a line and we'll get you on there and we'll have you competing. And you get these fantastic prizes up for grabs. It's called bragging rights. And you get to brag about how great you were and winning on the evening. So get involved and that'll be great. But once again, thank you for watching. Thanks you for listening. And we'll see you again here next Thursday night, 8 p.m. on Swinging from the Hip. Thank you very much.